Yeah, so, so there was that kind of jewellery aspect and then I started to make work that really wasn't jewellery anymore because I was fascinated with an idea as opposed to having having a, having any kind of concept of what the finished object was going to look like. I was actually more working with ideas and with concepts and then that would generate the, the form that the work took. When I started making um, work, I was looking at Polynesian, well, Pacific Island material culture, and within that Polynesian body adornment, and there was that ethos, or whatever you call it, of taking something from the environment that was there in abundance and utilising it to create something else. So. Basically, I see them as, even though they look quite different, I see a direct connection between these works here and the lay or the breastplates that I've made over the years as well. Just say, for example, um, you know, I've got a, a little pandanus fan at home, a couple of them, and, and someone's carefully cut chip packets up and woven, you know, like the... Um, the um, foil into the into the weave of the fan so there's this beautiful kind of flashing of light and you know that kind of all sparkly glittery thing that i really like <laughs> and um you know and, and it's just you know from something that was just a piece of rubbish that would probably 99.9 like .9 times out of 100 you know in the bin and someone's made this object that's really beautiful so you know it's a lot of that is, is feeds into what I do now. That's sort of, you know, it's really important. So it's also um, kind of extending the thought to kind of environmental issues as well. Is, yes, is you can definitely look at it like that. And um, quite often I've been involved in exhibitions that talk about the environment and um, recycling, um, reusing. I can't bear to throw bits of plastic away because A, I think they might come in handy one day and B, it just feels sinful to add to the world's junk. <laughs> so I make this stuff in the sandwich. I just kind of collect stuff with no particular idea about why or what I'm going to do with it. Um, and I think it's, there's just a certain... I'll, I'll see something, an object or a thing, and there'll be a certain something that, in it that appeals to me, um, whether it's aesthetic or whether it's part of its narrative, you know, like where it's come from, who it's belonged to, who's given it. I mean, a lot of stuff I get given. People come around and they go, oh, you collect, you know, because just because I have 25 lampstands in my workshop, people think I collect them. And, you know, so you end up with people giving you things as well. So. Um, you just end up with a whole lot of stuff, yeah. but you take that thing, that object, and make it something else, and you reincarnate it in another form. Um, it comes from Dance Macabre, which is um, like the, da the dance of the dead, the dance of death, and it relates to the Vanitas work that I've been looking at um, and in the dance macabre is usually a, you know, a whole lot of skeletons dressed up in different outfits sort of um, proclaiming their status in, in society so you'd have like the, the king right down to the pauper um, dancing in a circle in, is skeletons and basically it's, it's a device to get people to consider their own mortality and to consider uh, the brevity of life and um, sort of making the most of it I suppose. Yeah. So that's, where, that's where the dance with the S came from. Yeah. I started making these little vanitas works about probably about two years, two or three years ago now and uh, because I've been looking at the um, Vanitas tradition of painting um, which you know also deals with the fleeting aspect of our life and you know the inevitability of, of our demise and 
So I just decided to make my own Vanitas works, but of course I don't paint. So these are my kind of, I guess, these are my depictions of, and my version of, of Vanitas works in the, you know, from the now. You know, the eternal question of what is the meaning of, you know, why are we here and all that kind of thing. Um, of course I have no answers, it's, um, I just get more questions. <laughs> but I enjoyed making the works, it's my way of thinking about these things and it's my way of expressing these issues, I suppose you could say. Uh, and then, you know, with these particular works, with the light works, um, the light, I always use light in my work as, as a it's a symbol for the divine and a symbol for divinity or spirituality or you know that kind of unknowable um, unquantifiable whatever it is that's you know obviously part of being human um, and, and what lies beyond and what lies between the t you know between life and, and death or beyond death it all just terribly circular and is there reincarnation or do we just all kind of rot into the ground and become a tomato plant or something? I, mean, I don't know. Yeah, it's not too The idea was I was sort of looking at that I used to have a lot of tarp cloth up on the walls and I'd sort of sit there and study it and you become quite mesmerised, it's quite, looking at the patterns, it starts to, you can get quite into quite a trance, if you will, and um, it just, it's just, I, it's quite a, um, I imagine it would be, it's like a mandala, as, you know, in, in terms of it as an aid to meditation. Yeah, you do need a three-dimensional space to view them. 